In this presentation, we'll go over some ways to integrate material from outside sources into your writing. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to utilize three methods to add sources into your essay, list the four steps of integrating quotations into your essay and apply them to your writing, and understand and avoid the common mistakes of integrating sources in your writing. Writing argumentative essays typically requires the use of support from outside sources, but integrating these sources into the essay can be challenging for some novice writers. To reduce confusion in this area, we'll go over three common methods that you can use to integrate sources and talk about some common errors with source integration as well. There are three common methods to use sources within an essay, summarizing, paraphrasing, and quoting. Deciding which method to use depends on your overall purpose for writing the essay, the source being used, and what you're trying to accomplish by using the source. A summary is a brief objective account in your own words of the main ideas in a source. A summary is always much shorter than the original source and describes what happens. Use summary to condense the material, which may help you reduce the overall information to draw out the main points that relate to your paper. Summarizing can also help you to omit extra information from the source material that is unnecessary in order to focus on the author's main points. Finally, summarizing is great when you need to simplify complex arguments, sentences, or vocabulary. When summarizing, be sure to give credit to the original source by naming the author and including an in-text citation. A paraphrase is a restatement of a source in your own words. Whereas summaries tend to be much shorter than the original source, paraphrases are often around the same length as the original source. You can use paraphrasing when the ideas of the source are important, but the original wording of the source is not. Typically, a paraphrase is best used for shorter passages and describes how something happens. Use paraphrasing to change the organization of ideas for emphasis. You may have to change the organization of ideas from the original source so that you can emphasize the points that are most related to your essay. You can also use paraphrasing to clarify the material. You may have to clarify complex passages into language that is appropriate for your audience. Finally, paraphrasing can be used to analyze the material. An analysis presents a close examination of a source by breaking it down into parts and can help your audience gain a deeper understanding of the source. For example, an analysis can help you determine which side to take in an argument, or it can help you decide whether or not a source uses sound reasoning and evidence. As with summarizing, you should give credit to the original source by naming the author and including an in-text citation. The last method for using sources is quoting. A quotation uses the exact words of the original source and puts them in quotation marks. Quotations are used when you want to cite a short amount of information from the source. You should use quotations to improve accuracy and conciseness. When paraphrasing or summarizing the source material cannot be done without changing the author's intent or you're unable to capture the meaning concisely, use quotations instead. You can also use quotations to provide authority for your argument. Using a quotation from a subject matter expert, for example, can serve as strong support for a claim that you're making. Finally, you should use quotations when you want to present memorable language. If the author of your source uses words that are particularly remarkable or effective, Use a quotation to capture its uniqueness. As with other methods, always give credit to the original source by naming the author and including an in-text citation. 
keep the following in mind. When using any of these methods, be sure to stay true to the original meaning of the source. You'll lose credibility with your audience if you attempt to skew the source's meaning in order to better support your argument. You should also be careful to avoid patch writing or writing that borrows too much wording and structure from the original source, as this can be considered plagiarism even if you include a citation. Instead, make sure that you use your own words to write your paraphrase or summary and use quotation marks around any material that's quoted word for word. Next, we'll talk a little bit about how to integrate quotations into your writing. Let's go over the basics. Good argumentative essays use the last method, quoting, more than the others. This is because quotations generally provide hard evidence that comes straight from the source itself, whereas summarizing and paraphrasing require you to put the information from the source in your own words. There are four basic steps to integrate a quotation into your essay. Introduce the quotation, integrate the quotation logically into your writing, explain the relevance of the quotation, and cite your source. Step one, introduce your quotation with a signal phrase that gives the author's name, such as Wordsworth writes, according to Wordsworth, or in his poem, Wordsworth argues. This indicates to your reader that what you're about to say comes from an outside source. When introducing a source for the first time, use the author's full name, then use the author's last name only for any subsequent references. When using secondary sources, provide any necessary context that lets the reader know that your source is reliable. Simply telling your reader that John Smith says vaping is bad for you proves nothing. Your reader will ask, so what? Who is this John Smith and why should I care what he has to say? Instead, offer your sources credentials whenever possible. For instance, Surgeon General John Smith states, according to a 2019 Gallup poll, or the notorious scholar and critic Harold Bloom writes. Avoid floating quotations. Never drop a quotation into your essay without introducing it first. This almost always leads to what's known as a floating quotation, a quotation that is dropped into an essay without being introduced or explained. In this common error, the writer assumes that the reader understands why the quotation has been included. To avoid this common error, never start a sentence with a quotation. Step two is to logically integrate the quotation into your text. Your quotation should fit into your sentence smoothly without grammatical errors. There are five ways that you can do this. First, you can introduce the quotation with a complete sentence and a colon. For example, Thoreau ends his essay with a metaphor, colon, time is but the stream I go a fishing in. Next, you can use a signal phrase separated from the quotation with a comma. For example, according to Thoreau, comma, we do not ride on the railroad, it rides upon us. Consider using a variety of verbs to introduce your quotation, such as says, thinks, believes, recalls, questions, writes, and asks. Additionally, you should always use present tense verbs in your signal phrases. The next option for logically integrating a quotation is to make the quotation a part of your sentence without using any punctuation between your words and the words that you're quoting. For example, Thoreau argues that we do not ride on the railroad, it rides upon us. You can also use very short quotations within your own sentence. For example, Thoreau states that his retreat to the woods around Walton Pond was motivated by his desire to live deliberately and to face only the essential facts of life. Here, the writer uses a combination of paraphrasing and quoting 
using quotation marks only around the material that is quoted word for word from the source. Finally, you can use a block quotation to integrate your source. Long quotations that are more than four lines of prose or three lines of poetry should be set off as block quotations. Introduce the quotation using one of the previous methods. The most common method used to introduce a block quotation is a complete sentence with a colon. Maintain double spacing and indent your block quotation one half inch from the left margin. This indentation replaces the need to use quotation marks. Do not indent the first line of the quotation as you would when starting a new paragraph. End your quotation with the appropriate punctuation followed by your in-text citation. In block quotations, no punctuation is necessary after the in-text citation. Note that you can also use brackets and ellipses in your quotations when you need to modify a quotation. You can add your own words in brackets to improve a quotation's clarity or to make it flow more smoothly with your writing, but be careful not to change the source's meaning and use brackets sparingly. For example, in this role, he, Morgan Freeman, in brackets, successfully conveys a diverse range of emotion. Here, brackets are used to clarify who the pronoun he is referring to. Ellipses can be used to omit unnecessary information from a quotation. For example, Thoreau believes that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams, ellipses, he will live with the license of a higher order of beings. Here, the writer has replaced some of the words in the quotation with ellipses in order to shorten it, but it retains the same overall meaning as the original quotation. Now that we've covered how to logically integrate a quotation into your writing, we can move on to the third step of integrating quotations, which is to explain the relevance of the quotation. Be sure to comment on your quotation by showing how it is relevant to the point you're trying to make. As mentioned previously, when you drop a quotation into your essay without an explanation, you assume that your reader knows why it's there, which is often not the case. Instead, you should show explicitly how your quotation relates to your overall argument. For example, according to Thoreau, we do not ride on the railroad, it rides upon us. Though at first glance this seems like a paradox, a closer analysis reveals Thoreau's argument. Technology controls us more than we control technology. As you can see here, the writer follows the quotation with a sentence that explains why it was used. The fourth and final step for integrating quotations is to always be sure to include an in-text citation for your source after your quotation. The formatting of your in-text citation is dependent upon what type of source you are citing. See your writing handbook or textbook or check out the MLA Style Center website or the Purdue OWL website online for more details on how to cite your sources using in-text citations. Here are a few final notes about using quotations within your writing. Choose your quotations wisely. Remember that the purpose of citing someone else's work is to support your own argument in some way. This is why it's important to include an explanation of the quotation and make a direct connection between the material presented in the quotation and your own argument. Avoid simply tossing in a quotation that doesn't contribute to your overall purpose just to meet the minimum source requirement for your writing project. For similar reasons, you should limit your quotations to about 10 to 15% of your total essay. The majority of your writing should be made up of your own words and ideas. Avoid lengthy block quotations unless they are absolutely necessary. Finally, if the title of a source that you're using is overly long, avoid citing the full title within your text. Instead, introduce the author only. The reader can always refer to your work cited page for more details about the source. 
Let's review. In this presentation, we discussed three methods to add sources into your essay, the four steps of integrating quotations into your essay and how to apply them to your writing, and the common mistakes of integrating sources in your writing. Thanks for watching.